Continuing on in the Amazon KDP series, we're discussing the 10 best KDP alternatives. Stay tuned to today's podcast. What's going on? This is Dale here, and I'm just tickled to death. You took a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me to talk about my favorite thing in self-publishing. I want to say a big shout out and a thank you to the fine folks over at Miblar. They are the sponsors of this channel. Miblar is a book cover design company for indie authors like you and me, and their mission is to help each and every author turn their book cover into a number one marketing tool. That's why they keep their prices affordable. Yeah, they're actually relatively inexpensive, and they provide authors with such benefits as unlimited revisions, first book cover design concept in just five days, no prepayment for photo manipulated book covers, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you aren't happy with their work, you just request a full refund, folks. For more details about my preferred book cover design services in Miblart, visit our affiliate link at dailinks.com slash Miblart. That's M-I-B-L-A-R-T. And hey, you can take 10% off if you use the coupon code DALE10. That's DALE10, all caps, because you have to shout it at them. All righty. Uh, boy, we've got about 10 of these different alternatives, and I've got a plus one. I had to add one towards the end, so it's technically 11, but I'm not going to cover that 11th one too much in depth. Since there's so much, we're going to move really, really fast. So I'm going to start out with the very first one. Number one, Apple Books for Authors is one of the best alternatives to publishing through KDP. It does have its limitations because it only supports ebooks and it does have audiobooks that you distribute to, but it's inaccessible through your Apple Books for Authors dashboard. You have to go to other avenues like, say, Find Away Voices in order to get Apple distribution. Now, for your ebooks, you can distribute to over 51 Apple stores. It is really nice. In fact, uh, Apple's treated me really well over the years, and I'm pretty happy with that being an alternative. The royalty structure is really nice. It's 70%, regardless of the price that you put it at. 70%. I like that. The fact that there's no little asterisk next to it, kind of like what they do over on KDP. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Kindle Direct Publishing. 70%, unless you price it within this range. How about no? No, how about that? But the pros and cons, let's discuss those. The pros of Apple Books for Authors is now accessible to all people. It used to require access to Mac products or a Mac cloud of some sort. Either way, it was like anybody who had PCs, you're just kind of like, I can't publish over there? Why not? Uh, yeah. So, and also the other pro that they have, they just recently rolled out some advertising options that authors can look into. And uh, I have yet to play with that, but I think it's a plus the fact that you can be able to advertise your book. Now the cons over on Apple books for authors is there's way too much friction, way too much. There's two individual like accounts that you have to have open, Apple Books for Authors, and then you have to, I think, have to have iConnect or iTunes Connect or something like that. You have to have these two different dashboards. It's just so confusing. Can't they just merge that stuff all into one place? I uh, it's it's just, yeah, it's whatever. All right, number two, Barnes and Noble Press. Now they support ebooks and print books. Now they also have audiobooks available on their platform, but again, much like Apple, it's inaccessible. The distribution reach is 12 regions for ebooks. Really good. Like all the Barnes and Noble places, we get to reach on into there. Print book, it's US only. So if you're looking to get your print book put everywhere throughout the world through Barnes and Noble Press, sorry to say it just doesn't work that way. Now, the royalty structure for them, you have ebooks for 70%, no asterisk. Hello, KDP. Yeah, can we get with the program? You're going to sense a little bit of a pattern, and I'm going to stop drilling down into that. It's probably not nice for me to, to poke the bear. So for print books, you get 55% minus print fees, which is not too bad. Now, the pros and cons for Barnes & Noble Press is their print quality is excellent. Now, I've heard some people argue with me on this one, so this is just my opinion. I really like their print quality, and they have tons of options. I mean, it just, it seems limitless, the amount of options you can do for print. Now the cons, I already kind of mentioned it. You can only get distribution for your print books in the U.S. only. I really wish Barnes & Noble would open that option up, globally speaking, because I think that everyone would probably win in the process of doing that. Number three is Google Play Books. Now, Google Play Books is one that not too many people are tapping into. And it's kind of crazy because the world's most used search engine in Google is offering you a place to distribute your book. Now, they only do ebooks. And again, 
Audiobooks are inaccessible except for the new option that they have for artificial intelligence narration. Now, if you want to go ahead and distribute audiobooks through your Google Play dash, uh, Playbooks dashboard, then you have to use the AI narration. I have not seen the ability to upload directly to there. You have to find other avenues, much like the last two options, through like say, find away voices that you can get Google Play Books. Now, the distribution reach is really nice because it's over 70 regions. Anywhere that Google reaches, you're gonna be able to reach. Now, the royalty structure, 70%. <laughs> cough, cough. Yeah, that's, 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 I'm looking at you, Amazon KDP. I, I, all right, I, I'm done on that. I'm done. Uh, so the pros when it comes to this avenue is it's got wide reach, super wide. I mean, come on, 70, what, over 70 regions? What, what, what is this? And here's the beauty of it. This is the best part. Not many people realize this. You know how you have a look inside feature over on Amazon that people can kind of click open and it shows typically 10%, the first 10% of your book to customers so they can make an informed purchase. Now you get the same ability for sampling. Now if you just leave it go and let Google Playbooks just handle all that for you, it'll typically just get 10%, put it on there. You can control that sample content and here's the best part. They index that text so it makes your book more discoverable. I found this out a number of years ago through one of my fitness publications called the Chest and Arms Workout Plan. And in the Chest and Arms Workout Plan, I just allowed for 10%, the very first part. For whatever reason, that thing started getting downloads like crazy. I was like, what is going on? And then I studied what I did in the front portion of it, the front matter, the introduction and everything. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, it was keyword rich. I was didn't realize when I was writing this that it was SEO. It was search engine optimized. Really, really cool. Now, there is cons when it comes to Google Play Books. It's got a clunky user interface. The, the, the user interface leaves something to be desired. They're improving it slowly but surely. I, hopefully, they don't make the same mistake that some of other self-publishing companies make when they try to change everything drastically and then it may, messes everything up in the meantime. Number four, Kobo Writing Life. Now, Kobo Writing Life supports ebooks and audiobooks with no exception on the audiobooks. Now, the distribution reach for ebooks, 14 regions plus 22, or excuse me, 14 regions with 22 platforms individually. And they also have direct distribution to overdrive. Now, this is kind of nice because getting overdrive distribution means you should be able to get into libraries. And the fact that you can use overdrive via Kobo, Kobo doesn't take any type of aggregate fee. In other words, they're not going to say, okay, we're going to take 10% because you're doing it through us. They literally just give you 100% of the profits. I think that's kind of cool. Audiobooks, they have six major regions plus four distribution sites. Now, when it comes to royalty structure, their eBooks are 70%, no asterisk. Audiobooks, it's okay, it's good. It's definitely better than ACX, in my opinion. 35% royalties for audiobooks priced $2.99 or lower, or 45% royalties for audiobooks priced over $2.99. So uh, they, the, I think everybody can kind of figure it out. Just price your books above $2.99. Now the pros and cons. Now the pros when it comes to this platform is it's clean. They have an intuitive user interface. It's actually one of my absolute favorites of all publishing platforms, even being out KDP. And also they have Kobo Plus, which essentially Kobo Plus is their answer to Kindle Unlimited. But the nice thing is unlike Kindle Unlimited, you don't have to be exclusive to Kobo to utilize Kobo Plus. People can check out your book and you're gonna get paid for that. All right, now the cons, the audiobook royalties. I I really wish audiobook royalties were considerably more. Maybe I just don't have a good understanding of what it costs to distribute and host those type of things with audiobooks. But man, 45%, that's the best we've got so far? Oh man, what do we gotta do to get those numbers better? Now, number five, Blurb. They're an aggregate publisher. This means that they will go ahead and publish to many platforms on your behalf. They support eBooks and print books. Now they are known for stellar print quality, but at a higher base cost, meaning that it's gonna cost a considerable amount more. And uh, I'll tell you though, the quality is really good. I When I ordered a proof, I was like, wow, this is good. Now they have tons of trim sizes and print options, and this includes paperback and hardcover. The distribution reach 
is nothing to write home about. It's about six different avenues. This includes Blurb, Apple Bookstore, Google Play Bookstore, Kobo, Amazon, and also an API integration you can put into your website. The royalty structure is eBooks. You get 100% of net profits, but there is a setup cost for eBooks. With print books, still unanswered. Don't know this. I don't know why. Like, we can't just see that like in a public space. So blurb, please update your FAQs, get that stuff put in order because it seems to me like a lot of people are probably wondering what kind of royalty am I getting? Oh, it's, I don't know. So the pros, the pros of this higher quality print, love it. Cons, they have a higher base cost and a little bit of redundant reach. Be careful when you're using some of these avenues, you do not want to duplicate publish. So since blurb reaches Amazon, you want to deselect that avenue through Blurb because if you're using Amazon already and then Blurb tries to go there, it's going to have two of your books up rather than one and it creates a lot of market confusion. So this rule, apply it going forward because I'm going to be mentioning a lot of aggregate publishers. And speaking of, number six, Lulu, former sponsors of this channel. Uh, big shout out to Chelsea Bennett. She's just such a sweetheart. Um, any rates, they actually support eBooks and a variety of print books. I mean, tons of options in print books, more than you can think of like spiral bound notebooks, I think is kind of cool. Now the distribution reaches about five, much like blurb. They have Lulu, Lulu direct, which is an integration with Shopify, WooCommerce, and also Lulu API is another one, which actually I'd make it six. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Ingram Book Group, meaning Ingram Content Group, the same ones that work with Ingram Spark and, of course, expanded distribution for KDP. I'll discuss that in a little bit. The royalty structure is 80% of net profits. If you ever hear me say net profits, that means that when it gets sent out, aggregated out to all these different avenues, when it comes back, obviously those avenues are going to take their cut. So if I am publishing to Amazon via, let's say, Lulu, Amazon's probably going to say, okay, you get 70% of all earnings. We take 30% cut. So that 70% thing comes on over to Lulu. They're going to take 20% of that 70% and you take 80% of that. So that's why I say net profits. So that way you kind of understand that it's not just 80%. Hooray, success. Awesome. 80%. That's way better than the other places. And yeah, you're getting, you know, part of the pie coming back to you, not the whole pie. Uh, there really aren't too many other exceptions when it comes to this particular rule because, uh, I mean, obviously everybody's got to make their money and when you're working with the middleman, they're going to expect some type of a cut. Now, when it comes to Lulu, the pros, tons of print options. Love them. Great print quality. I love it. They also have Lulu Direct and Lulu API, which is very unique. And Lulu Direct is really nice if you're looking to try to fulfill print orders through your website. Uh, and you don't want to really fulfill it yourself, uh, Lulu directs the way to go. Um, the print fulfillment time's a little slower, but uh, my biggest beef is not that though. It's the fact that they have quarterly payouts. The quarterly payouts, that's just, it's weird. Let's get with the monthly stuff. Like this is the only platform doing quarterly payouts. Heck, Smashwords changed that a number of years ago. Um, now this does not include Lulu direct and Lulu API because Lulu direct and Lulu API, you get paid right away. As soon as a customer purchases your book, it goes right into your PayPal account. At that point, you just have to fulfill the order by just selecting a specific setting. And then Lulu just gets to work, sends it off. Here's the cool thing though, with Lulu direct and Lulu API, Lulu does not take a cut. All they do is they take the print costs as well as the shipping fees. That's it. So that's another pro, I think, in my opinion. Number seven is Publish Drive. I used to cover these guys exhaustively on both of my channels at some point or another, but then they had changed their model. They are still an aggregate publisher. They do fulfill eBooks, paperback books, and audiobooks. Now, the distribution reach is a total of 30 avenues. Now, they're the only self-publishing company right now that offers Chinese distribution. So if you want to get your books over into China in some capacity, then Publish Drive is the way to go. Their royalty structure is, you ready for this? 100% of net profits with a catch, a monthly subscription fee. Now, rather than the other aggregate publishers where they take a revenue share, meaning like Lulu takes 20% of your earnings and you get 80%. With Publish Drive, they don't. They don't. So to me, if you uh, already have a following, you already know that you're going to be selling X amount of books to justify that monthly subscription, then Publish Drive is definitely the way to go. So if you're making, say, $1,000 or more per month in sales, 
then going to Publish Drive is going to be a given. Rather than going direct to all these different avenues, you just jump through Publish Drive, you get all those profits and all they take. It's just a little tiny amount. So let's say you want to go over to Apple Books for some reason by way of Publish Drive. All you're going to need to worry about is Apple's still going to take their cut, but all you're going to get is that 100% of the net profits and you have it all in one dashboard as opposed to 50,000 different dashboards. Now, the pros for this, it's great for established authors and publishing imprints who can justify the monthly subscription fees. Now, the cons, are these obscure avenues that they hit, are they worth the extra hassle? I found that when I was trying to delist with some of the sites, they were super slow. And it was like these random like, like sites I've never heard of. You know, your mom's ebooks.com or something like that. Like, I don't know if that's a legit one, but it, it, as an example, I was like, okay, I need to delist this because I wanted to go to Kindle Unlimited and, you know, go back to exclusive to that platform. Well, I had to wait weeks because these distributors were taking forever. Are they worth it? I, I don't know. It's going to be up to you. Number eight, Streetlib. They're another aggregate publisher. They uh, do ebooks and more recently included print books. Their distribution reach includes over 50 online retailers, digital libraries, and subscription apps reaching over 250 outlets and over 50,000 consumer points worldwide. Wow. Uh, so Streetlib has been slowly but surely tweaking their platform. It's really proved promising. The royalty structure is 60%. Now, most ebook stores are going to take 30%. And then Streetlib is going to take 10% revenue. So that's not 60% of net profits. It's a 60% period. So some exceptions, you know, that include Google Play and Kobo, you know, taken from print sale, they do about 51% for the store, 10% for Streetlib and printing costs. They also have an online earnings calculator. And uh, keep in mind that they have very strict and specific guidelines for the print specs. Now, the pros and cons for Streetlib, uh, there's somewhat a new option. Uh, they've been around for a little while. But they're still relatively new to me. They're constantly growing. I'm getting, you know, weekly updates and it's so cool to see what they're doing. The cons, well, they're still new and unexplored territory for me. So I can't weigh in one way or the other on Street Lib, but I'm very uh, hopefully optimistic. Now, number nine, Draft the Digital, aggregate publisher. Love me some Draft the Digital. I was just talking about this before I even went uh, into the podcast recording. This is going to include the platform of Smashwords since it more recently merged with Draft the Digital. Now, they support ebooks and paperback books. The distribution reaches over 17 avenues, including library distribution for eBooks. Now, print book distribution is a little bit more limited. You get Amazon and you get Ingram, all right? So if you happen to be going through Amazon or Ingram at all, using print probably doesn't make much sense. Although I hear a lot of people swear by the print feature. If you do not have print yet over on Draft the Digital, just ask for it. Reach out to the support team and say, hey, could I get access to it? I think it's still somewhat in beta, but I think it's like, do you have a pulse? Okay, great. As long as you ask for it, they typically will just give it to you. Now, the royalty structure for eBooks, you get 90% of net profits. Now, this varies per avenue, by the way. Usually shakes out to like, say, 60% of the eBook list price. And that means like when everybody takes that. So 90% of net profits, let's just keep it simple so that way nobody's getting confused. Now, paperbacks, it's 45% minus print costs. It's not the best. It's not one that I would easily stomach, but here we are. Pros and cons. Now, pros, the Smashwords merge. I think that's so cool. The Smashwords storefront's amazing. Um, the books to read tool that they have, which will get you universal book links, and you can even put your store ID for Amazon Associates. I think that's cool. Cons, well, they don't play with account holders banned on Amazon. So if you got banned on Amazon, don't go to Draft the Digital. They don't want to. They don't want to mess with you. Like seriously, if you've you've been scamming your way, you think I'm going to go to Draft the Digital. Yeah, they're going to catch you. Number ten. Last but not least is Ingram Spark, the biggest aggregate publisher there is. They do ebooks and print books. Their distribution reach includes six regions and 36 different distributors. In fact, they boast over 40,000 plus retailers and libraries. <sighs> what are those avenues? Don't know. Don't know. They, they'll tell you some of the main ones like, you know, Apple and Barnes and Noble and Kobo and all that stuff, but they won't tell you those other ones. And I think that that's just never been one that settles well with me, but and it's also an all or nothing situation. You either go with all the avenues or you don't go with them at all. Now, the royalty structure, ebook, it's 40% of net profits and print books, it's variable between 45% to 65% minus print fees. It's up to you to set that wholesale discount. Now, the pros, 
They have the widest reach out there. In fact, it's so wide that their parent company of Ingram Content Group is what fulfills orders through expanded distribution for KDP. So meaning if you want to distribute through Ingram Spark, you may want to deselect the expanded distribution option in your Amazon KDP dashboard. Now the cons, it's the inability to deselect avenues for distribution. It's all or nothing. I don't like that. It stinks. Now, real quick honorable mention, because I know we're getting towards a 20 minute spot here, um, Tableau. Tableau is another aggregate publisher. Um, I'm just not going to dive too deep into them. They're an Australian company and I reached out to them more recently and we just haven't had a chance to sit down and chat about their, uh, their uh, options. And Tableau though works very similar to something like Publish Drive where you're paying a yearly subscription fee for distribution. Um, I see nothing but good words about ta Tableau. So take a look at them. That's T-A-B-L-O. Now, speaking of spelling out things, I want to, of course, give a big shout out to our sponsors, Miblart. Another thing that makes Miblart different from their competitors is they provide authors with book cover designs for free. Yeah, for free. If you want to envision your book cover before making an order, Miblart's designers always analyze the genre, always and they market to make sure the book cover will fit the genre. Yeah, because... Some of us authors out there, we get a little bit, you know, our, our design briefs get a little bit lengthy and we get a little too much. Yeah, here's the cool thing. You just send it on over there and they set up the book cover design according to the genre and the reader's expectations. Go over to dalelinks.com slash miblart to get yourself a cover design today and also use the coupon code of dale10 to get 10% off. That is dalelinks.com slash miblart. That's M-I-B-L-A-R-T. Final thoughts, folks, when it comes to looking into these alternatives to Amazon KDP. Diversify your reach. Test out new markets. But one of the things I'm just going to encourage you is pay attention to where you're distributing and where that distribution goes to because you want to avoid duplicate distribution. As you can imagine, a platform like Amazon doesn't want to have three versions of the same book on their platform. It's not kosher to them. Next week, folks, we're continuing on in the Amazon KDP series and start to kind of wrap it up slightly here with the 10 best Amazon KDP resources and channels. Hey, to get advanced access to all podcasts, visit dalelinks.com slash YouTube podcast one week before the audio content publishes. Yeah, we're here every Monday, 12, 15 p.m. Eastern daytime on the YouTube podcast channel. In the meantime, it's been self-publishing with Dale and I will chat with you next week. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Special shout out to my channel members for both the podcast channel and the main channel. Without your support, some projects we do at Self-Publishing with Dale would be much harder to fund. If you want to contribute to the cause, visit dalelinks.com slash memberships for details and get your on-screen shout out at the end of each broadcast. Till later, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale and I'll see you soon.